In step five, we're going to take a look at uh, some what are called factoring the special products. And there actually are more than these two, but these are two of the more common ones you'll see. And these are really shortcuts. This is still a trinomial, and any of these could actually be factored by using the method from step four, the ax squared plus bx plus c1. But if you recognize these patterns, then the factoring is a lot quicker because it's a one-step thing rather than, what was that, three steps. Uh, x squared plus 2ax plus a squared starts with a perfect square and also ends with a perfect square. Perfect squares are numbers that if you take the square root of them, you get a whole number. So for example, 4 is a perfect squared because the square root of 4 is 2, whole number. Um, uh, 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9, so 9 is a perfect square. Uh, 5 squared is 25, so 25 is a perfect square. Now, the way this works is this will factor into, and the plus goes with the plus, the minus goes with the minus. Uh, if there's a plus here, it should factor into x plus a squared. This only works if the coefficient of x here, the 2a, is double the value squared here. And I'll show you that through the, some examples. If it's x squared minus 2ax plus a squared, it factors into x minus a squared. The plus goes to the plus, the minus goes to the minus. So in order to factor x squared plus 12x plus 36, it looks like, gee, maybe that's a perfect square trinomial. It starts with a perfect square because it's x squared ends in the perfect square because 36 is at 6 squared, or the square root of 36 is 6. So if this is a perfect square trinomial, it should factor into x, because it's x that you squared to get x squared, plus 6, because 6 squared is a 36 in the end. This works because the 12 here coefficient is double the 6. See, 2a is double the a here. You can also check any of these by expanding. If we take x plus 6 and multiply it by another x plus 6, that's what x plus 6 squared means. x times x is x squared. x times the 6 is 6x. Six, 6 times x is another 6x. So there's the reason there's two of them. It's 2ax because there's two of the same. And 6 times 6 is 36. So we get x squared plus this, these two like terms add to 12x, and then of course we got the 36 in the end, which is exactly the same thing we started with. So that's just checking to make sure the factoring works. Now the only difference in the next one is a minus 12x instead of a, a plus 12x. So if this uh, factors, it should be x minus 6 squared. And again, it does because x squared is x squared, negative 6 squared is 36, and negative 6 doubled is the negative 12x. Now a little larger one, uh, this starts with a perfect square because uh, 5 squared is 25 and x squared means it's a perfect square. And uh, 9 is a perfect square because 3 squared is 9. So if this factors, and we'll uh, put an empty set of brackets here, uh, what's at the beginning is what you square to get 25x squared. Or if you take the square root of this, that's what's at the beginning here, which would have to be 5x. Now minus the sign here is the same sign here, like minus 12x minus plus 12x plus. Plus in the top, plus. Minus in the top, minus. So there's a minus here. And what's on the end is the square root of 9. Just like this is 6 because the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 9 is 3, so we'll put a 3 right there. And of course you can check any of these by expanding it out. If you square, and actually let's just multiply it out. 5x minus 3 squared means there's 2 5x minus 3 is multiplied. So 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 5x times a negative 3 is minus 15x. And then negative 3 times 5x is another negative 15x. And negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Well, this is the 25x squared at the beginning. These two terms negative 15x and negative 15x add to negative 30x and of course 9 in the end, 9 in the end. So it does check. Uh, one more. Uh, this is a perfect square trinomial. 49x squared is a perfect square and 16y squared is also a perfect square. So if this factors it may be something squared. What goes at the beginning is the square root of 49x squared and what goes to the end is the square root of the 16y squared. So at the beginning here, we should have a 7x. 
because um, 7x squared gives you 49x squared. What's at the end is the square root of 16y squared, which should be 4y. So would be a 4y here. And again, we could expand this out um, without actually writing it out. If you square 7x, you get this term. If you square the 4y, you get this term. And the reason this is 56xy is because it's actually this term times this term doubled. That's what the 2ax actually means. It's, see, a times x, it's this term times this term doubled. So 7x times 4y would be 28 xy doubled is 56 xy okay one more here it starts the perfect square ends the perfect square um, so if this could be factored it should be so at the beginning um, what we square to get 9x squared of course would be 3x and what we square to get 4 would be 2 and actually I started to put a plus there it should be a minus because there's a minus 17x here so 3x minus 2 but it doesn't check if you square the 3x you do get this term and if you square the negative 2 you do get 4 that's okay but 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x and if you double that you do not get negative 17x so even though it starts and ends with the perfect square you have to check to make sure that middle term works uh, but it doesn't here so that is not 3x minus 2 squared so then what we would do is we'd return to the step four, factoring ax squared plus bx plus c. Find two numbers that add to negative 17 and multiply to 36. Nine times four is 36. Now if they add to a negative 17, then the two numbers have to both be negative because they're multiplying to a positive 36, but adding to negative 17. So we'd list all the uh, factors of 36 that are both negative. So negative one and negative 36, negative two and negative 18. There's actually five of them all together. Negative 3 and negative 12 multiply to 36. Remember, 9 times 4 is the 36. Uh, negative 4 and negative 9, and also uh, negative 6 and negative 6. But none of these pairs of numbers add to negative 17. That adds to negative 37, that adds to negative 20, negative 15, negative 13, and negative 12. But we do not have any that add to negative 17. So after checking all of that, like trying the perfect square trinomial thing and trying the ax squared plus bx plus c thing none of it works so then we would just simply state you can't factor it it will not factor now the last of the special products we're going to cover in this lesson is uh, the difference of two perfect squares x squared and a squared are both perfect squares because they're something squared and that factors into x plus a and x minus a multiplied by uh, the two factors are the same except one is a plus between the x and the a and one is a minus uh, x squared minus 81 is the difference, there's the subtraction sign, difference of two perfect squared squares. x squared is a perfect square, and so is 81, because it's 9 squared. So since it's 9 squared, this would factor into x plus 9 and x minus 9. And remember, you can always check any of those by expanding. If we take x plus 9 and x minus 9 and multiply them, uh, x times x is x squared x times the negative 9 would be minus, minus 9x. 9 times x is plus 9x. And 9 times negative 9 is minus 81. Now these two terms in the middle are opposites, so they add to 0. And so we're just left with x squared minus 81, which is exactly what we started with. So that does check. Uh, 36x squared minus 100, that's uh, the difference of two perfect squares but hold on just a second there's also a common factor don't forget the common factoring from the very first beginning of this this tutorial in step one you can divide even evenly each of these by four so we're going to factor a four out 36 x squared divided by four is 9 x squared and 100 divided or negative 100 divided by four is minus 25 this is still the difference of two perfect squares so we've got the common factor of four and this will factor into two binomials that are the same. Um, at the beginning of each of these is the square root of 9x squared, which would be 3x. So 3x times 3x is a 9x squared. At the end are plus 5 and minus 5 because it's the square root of 25 is 5. And of course, to multiply to negative 25, one has to be negative, one has to be positive. So if you expand this out, you will actually get that what we started with. 
Uh, here's one more example. Uh, 121 is a perfect square, and so is 64. Uh, a squared has to be perfect squared because it's A that's being squared. Uh, B to the fourth is still a perfect square because it's actually B squared squared. That gives you B to the fourth, so it's still something squared. So we put down two empty brackets. What goes at the beginning of each of these is the square root of the 121 A squared. Square root of 121 is 11, so it should be 11 A at the beginning of each of these. Plus and one's a minus. What goes at the end is the square root of 64 B to the fourth. Square root of 64 is 8 and then B squared. So we'll put a 8 B squared and then of course minus 8 B squared at the end of the other one. And again, if we expand this out, we will get what we started with. There's no middle term here because this product would be 88 AB squared, and this product would be negative 88 AB squared, which are opposites. That's why there's no middle term, just like the 9x and negative 9x add to 0 here, no middle term. Now, factoring special products, this last one here is still actually the difference of two perfect squares. This is a perfect square because it's 5x plus 3 squared. This is also a perfect square because it's 4x minus 7 squared. Uh, it doesn't have to be a monomial that's being squared like 9 squared is 81, um, like uh, uh, 3x squared is 9x squared. It doesn't have to be a monomial. It can be a binomial or even bigger, I suppose. So think of this as, okay, in your x squared minus a squared equals x plus a, x minus a. Think of this as the x, what's, be the, what's being squared at the beginning, and the 4x minus 7 as the a. So if this is the a and this is the b, the first factor is, sorry, uh, this is the uh, x and this is the a. Uh, we do x plus a first. Actually, you could do the x minus a first, doesn't matter. So this is the x and this is the a. So that's the first factor. Second factor here is the x minus the a. So the 5x plus 3 minus 4x minus 7. x plus a, the sum of the two x and a x minus a is the difference between them, so the x minus the a, this minus this in the end. And now we want to simplify each of these factors because they will simplify considerably. And we'll just remove the brackets to do that. So if we remove the brackets here, these are just added so the terms stay exactly the same. And the second one, if we remove the brackets here, 5x plus 3 stays the same, uh, but the, uh, the negative here changes these signs because you're actually multiplying a negative 1 in here. So it becomes minus 4x and then taking away negative 7, same as adding 7. And then we just collect like terms. 5x plus 4x is 9x and 3 minus 7 is negative 4. 5x minus 4x is x and 3 plus 7 is 10. So that's the two factors of this. If we could, another way you could have done this, we could have actually expanded this all out before we did any factoring. We would have got a trinomial and we could have factoring it, factored it just like in step number four, the ax squared plus bx plus c. And that would have worked just fine. And so that's some uh, strategies you can use uh, for factoring.